we will see like a dual uh, port memory and if this is the case <coughs> assuming that we will have an address A an address B and then we will have data input A data input B write enable A write enable B and also with the clock then we will have data output A and data output B so how we can write something like that in the Verilog okay so we will do exactly as we did earlier here we will define the inputs and the outputs of course if the input is just like more than one pin so we have to define like how many pins do we need since our address is 8 so we have to define it 7 colon uh, 0 the our data is 32 so we have to define it 31 colon 0 the data output is exactly the same but it has to be defined as an output and we have to define it also as a reg or register because it is in the left hand side in the always block as we mentioned earlier so how we can synchronously read and write from port A and read and write from port B we mentioned that if we would like to do this synchronously so we have to depend on the clock this clock can be a positive edge clock or can be a negative edge clock and then if I have the right enable of port A please if you have the RAM like that write at this slot which is basically this RAM of a slot of address A meaning as an example slot number 2 write at this slot whatever you have in the data input so now I'm writing to the RAM under the condition of a positive edge clock okay <clears throat> then at the output please show at the output whatever you have at that particular slot at the output and I'm representing this with whatever I have here I will do exactly the same but just with B so I will write to a certain other address inside the other port in the RAM and I will read with the same concept but the question is okay so this writing and reading for both of the ports it is synchronously what will be the case if we would like to do that asynchronously regarding the read so if I would like to write <coughs> synchronously I will do exactly the same for port A and I will do exactly the same for port B as we did in the previous slide I have a positive edge clock if the write enable please write at that particular location whatever you have from data input this is the case here and this is the case here however if I would like to read asynchronously so this means that I don't need a clock and I just need an assign and since I need an assign I don't have to have I don't need or I don't have to have an always block and assign at this data output whatever you have at that particular address as you can see here and here I would like also to pay your attention that since the reading of this data output is not inside an always block if you look closely here there is no definition for register so this guy is only output and this guy is only output I did not define this as a register as I did in the previous slide because this guy is not inside an always block then the question is 
if I have simultaneous read and write to shared address. As an example, if I am writing to address X while simultaneously read from address X, we have multiple of questions that should come to your mind. Because basically you will implement that and you need to think how exactly the process is happening. So if the value that is currently being written will appear at the output at the same time, if I, you ask yourself what data should be assigned to the data output bus of my memory if I am writing and reading at the same time. So whatever I will read is the value that is currently being written or the existing value at this address before it is overwritten or the existing value of the data output bus of the memory. Which one of these do you think is the answer? So again, what, should, what data should be assigned to the data output bus of my <coughs> memory? Actually, it can be this or this or this, as we will see shortly. It depends on my design or whatever I will choose in the my design inside the FPGA since we will design the processor ourselves. But before we go to the very log code to show you the differences between this and this and that, I would like to remind you with something very important in the very log. So we have in the very log this sign and we have this sign. You can think of these are both equal, but actually they are not exactly the same. This is called a blocking assignment. And this called non-blocked. So what is the difference between a blocking and a non-blocking? Basically, since you have already went through a lot of the higher level code, C, Java, Python, whatever the code that you have already learned, <clears throat> so you can easily understand that guy, which is basically what we call the blocking, meaning that I will do whatever I have in the left-hand side in sequence. So if I have something equal to another thing, and then I have <coughs> something equal to that, and then I have, as an example, this equal to this, so this will be assigned to that, yes, and then this now is holding the data that is, will appear at this particular moment, and that guy will be equal to this, so this guy is holding the same data as this guy. And then this guy now <coughs> will hold that information. And this guy will be equal to this. So basically, whatever I have here is now equal whatever I have here. Agree? This is what is exactly follow whatever you have learned before. So just like as a sequence. Yes, one after the other. One after the other. It's called the blocking. So this guy will block <coughs> any other thing else and then will take the value. And then this guy will block any other things and then will take the value and so on and so forth. Okay, so what is the difference between this and if we are using exactly the same, but instead of having this blocking assignment, we will have this guy. Here is the difference. This is called non-blocking, meaning it will non-block any of the things in the left, whatever like I will wait, meaning that I will take a snapshot suddenly, and whatever is in the right-hand side will be on the left-hand side. So I will not do this in sequence, meaning that whatever I had in the previous clock cycle 
will be assigned to this. I will not wait until this is updated. The same exactly here. Whatever is there in the previous clock cycle will be assigned to that guy. I will not wait until this is updated. If you think closely, so this means that if you remember, if we would like to do a swap, usually if I would like to do a swap, I have to have a temporary variable, yeah? In order to hold one of them and then can do the swap. Correct? This is what you have learned till now. But with this idea, you don't need to have this temporary value. You can just easily swap by the non-blocking. Because whatever in the right-hand side will be equal to the left-hand side as a mirror. Snapshot, and this is equal to that. So if this is, as an example, equal to 3, and this is equal to 4, and this is equal to 5, at this moment, so this guy will be equal to 3, this guy will be equal to... <coughs> to 4, this guy will be equal to 5. I will not wait until this is updated to this, or this will update it to this, and this will update it to this, and this 3 will appear here. This won't be the case. Okay? Is this clear? And by the way, this is something very important. If you are going to any interview that needs a very log, one of the important questions that will be asked, do you know what is the difference between the blocking assignment and the non-blocking assignment? This is 100%. 100% question for an interview that needs very long will be that. Do you know the difference between blocking and non-blocking? And give me an example. Because it's not acceptable that you say that I know very long and you don't know that difference. Okay, so going back, we can just like <clears throat> do exactly the same options, but a little bit in another expression, meaning that will I read first or will I write first or there is no change, meaning if I read first, so this means that all the content is read before new content is loaded. Write first, so this means that the new content is immediately made available for reading. So I write first. And this is, by the way, is also known as write through. And I'm expecting that you are, will be familiar that this is called write through. And the last thing that is no change, meaning that the data output does not change as the new content is loaded into the RAM. Okay, <clears throat> so now we are taking like a very long example and I'm telling you that this is simple dual port synchronous RAM with all data read during write. And if this is the case, how I can write my very log code in order to represent whatever I'm saying. Okay, that's fine. Here inputs and outputs. Now we are a big guy that knows like how to write all of these inputs and outputs. Now we have an always plug that is post of edge clock. We have defined our RAM that will be 16-bit width, and it have 256 slots. Inside the always block, I have the clock in the sensitivity list, and then if write enable, and I have these two lines. With these two lines, it just describes whatever I'm saying here. Because if you look closely, this is what? Non-blocking. Non-blocking means that whatever in the right-hand side will be in the left-hand side. Correct? I will not wait until this is updated here and I have the value here and this is written here. Correct? I will not wait. So this means that I read first. So this means that if I have that guy here, and whatever the read option, have this guy, and then I'm writing. Since I have a snapshot <coughs> from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, 
So whatever I will have here is whatever I had in the previous clock cycle. So you have to think closely that this guy means that whatever I have in the data input will appear or will be written in that particular place and whatever I had at that particular will be shown at the output. I will not wait until I overwrite and then read. Agree? So let's take another example. <clears throat> Which mode is this? Which mode is this? Again, everything is exactly the same. <clears throat> Again, the data up to the left, it is defined as register. So this read first, or write first, or no change? Why? Correct, because this is in sequential. This is as you already like familiar with in the any of the higher level language code. That you will write first, and then after you write, you will begin to read. And if this is the case, so this means that new data will be read during the writing, yes? So I'm just whatever like I'm writing, I will read, correct? Which mode is this? Okay, so we would like to also learn uh, today that if I would like to initialize a ROM or a RAM, whatever like I would like to initialize inside my memory, inside my register, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's see like how we can do that. We will define the register as uh, the ROM as we did earlier. This is, can be ROM, RAM, register, whatever I would like to call. Yes, it is a block. And this block I will initialize beginning by this particular address have this data. This particular address had this data, this particular address had this data, and so on and so forth. Correct? I can do that. Just initialize it. What does that mean? Meaning that I will have here 32, and this is like, as an example, hex. Yes, I will have 32 bits, and this is hex. Okay. If there is another way that I can do that, instead of just writing in the very log all of this, yes, they said that <coughs> you can read, you can use something called read memory B or read memory H. How we can use something like that? Okay, let's define a RAM like this. I have the RAM that this is four uh, bits width and it has like 16 slots. And then I would like to initialize that particular RAM or that particular block that I have designed. It's just like as a small like that. Small one that is just like four bits width and it does have 16 slots how to initialize if you have a file that I already pre-written the values that I would like to initialize with, yes, in advance. Okay, if this is the case, I will use this particular code syntax, initial dollar sign read memory hex from this file because it is data.hex and I already wrote all of the values in hex. I have to initialize the RAM for comma two. What does that mean? Meaning, starting an address four and down to address two, please update the <coughs> values according to the file. So I don't have like to actually to explicitly write all of this inside the very log code. I can do the same with read memory binary. If I have, as an example, a binary file, or this is written in binary. So I have like this dot data, and I can have also initialize the RAM 
and I say begin from 0 and to 7 so I can do exactly the same and if you have like as an example this is in the file then you should be able like to use this read uh, uh, memory uh, binary to write all of this as an example to initialize just like care must be taken when accessing files in independent procedure blocks and also you should create as many lines in the file as there are rows inside the ROM or the RAM array that you have already designed. So the ROM initializing from the file will be something like that. We have already explained how to write the uh, uh, inputs and outputs, how to define my ROM, and then I will initialize by saying initial, begin, please read memory binary from that place to initialize uh, that particular block that we called ROM from the zero all the way to 255. And then, of course, when I would like to read all of this data output, I will govern this by a clock, cost of edge clock, and then the data output will have whatever I have in the ROM. But this is, remember, that this is synchronous. If I have this is asynchronous, I will do exactly the same till here. But when I read asynchronous, I have to say that assign data output equal to that. Just like I would like again, again to pay your attention that since this data output inside the left hand side of an always block, it is defined as a register. Since this guy not inside the always block, you can't see that this is defined here as a register. So with the memory registers, we have like a memory address register and a memory data register that can be used actually with the address and can be used with the data. And this is, the, I'm not expecting that you remember exactly what is the uh, uh, definitions or what is exactly each one of these is, uh, uh, is doing. However, the only thing that it just gives you an indication that I can have MAR or MDR, the MDR will be uh, as an example, connecting the to the uh, data bus, and the MRR MAR will be connected to the address bus. Okay, because actually we are designing again everything. Yes, so whatever the uh, 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 process that we will have inside, like any of the labs or the procedures, you just need to follow whatever we have at this particular time. Here is just like as an example of a one bit half adder, we can just write this half adder like that. I am defining the inputs A and B. I'm defining the output sum and the carry. And then I can say, hey, assign sum to A, X, or B. Assign the carry to A and B. By the way, I'm not expecting, if I'm telling you like, hey, write a very long code for the half adder, that you will remember that the sum have this formula. Yes, I don't expect that you remember that. This will be given to you if needed. However, you can just write and this will be the nice thing that you will create just an always block that the output, whatever the output that you will call output, is equal to A plus B. It can be as simple as that. And if you see the videos, the previous video, you will see like there is two ways that we can write. There is a behavioral way or there is a structural way. In the structural way, you have to define everything as you are designing by your hand, which is follow something like this. However, in the behavioral way, you can just like this is add with this. And actually, the very low code will do that for you. Full uh, adder. Also with the full adder, I can, I can give you this, the whole this, and then you will see like as an example that this is, is this or this or this, and this basically ended this with this, ended this with this, and so on and so forth. And as you can see from here that you can have like the always block all of this in the sensitivity list because any of these changes in the input I should get an output changes because actually any, because I'm adding, yes? So as soon as there is a change in the input, I have to have a change in the output. And again, that guy S is this X or this X or that, and the, uh, uh, the carry will be equal to that. And again, I'm not expecting that you will remember all of these expressions. This again will be given to you. 
I mean in the quiz or in the exam. I'm not expecting. I'm just like showing to you like how if I give you that expression or that expression, how you will write something like that. So <clears throat> I guess I will stop uh, at this particular slide and then we'll continue in the uh, next class.